Okay, so in the last four videos, I quickly went through, or slowly went through, how to set up the, the app.c with your own program that basically when we press the button, the green LED turns on, and when we release the button, the red LED turns on. Now, I want to kind of repeat the same process, but this time, I want it so that when we press button one, which is the other button, button one, when I press this button, I want the red LED to turn on. So the process is very similar, and uh, let's just get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize the GPIO pin. I'm going to hit Control Spacebar just to bring up this menu because sometimes I type really fast and I make lots of mistakes. So I like to you know take shortcuts. And so what I want is I want We'll start actually with the LED, and I know I want LED zero. And once again, I'm going to make the LED, I want to make the LED an output. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set it to the mode push-pull. Just to give you an idea of what push-pull is and how, you know, I say it's an output, but it doesn't look like it's an output. Push-pull is a type of output. So it's basically like if you think of an inverter, it's going to, when you put a, let's say it's a buffer, it's a digital buffer, okay? If you put a 1 into that input of that buffer, it's going to output a 1. If you put a 0, it's going to output a 0. When you have something like open drain output, okay, it's basically a MOSFET that turns on. And it can pull your output to zero, to ground, okay? It can short it to ground, I should say. And with those kind of outputs, the thing that you're missing is the ability to go up to your voltage. So you, you need a pull-up resistor to do the highs, okay? And so a push-pull is kind of like you have, a, you have a FET that will pull it down and a FET that pulls it up. And so these can be a lot faster, and they're easier to use. You don't need an extra... Uh, uh, resistor. So if you want more, if you want to look up this more, look up open drain. Okay. And then once again, I'm going to set its default. You know, when we initialize it, I want it to be zero uh, so that the LED is off. Uh, if you recall, if this is zero, there's zero volts across here because this is also zero. You know, once we make, you know, we set the digitally logic one, you know, this red LED will become probably this voltage VMCU. And there'll be a potential across here, which will allow current to flow and turn on the LED. So that's the LED. We're going to repeat the process. But this time for the button, and it's going to be button 1. And so we're going to put in the port. And then I want the pin. So you've got to just tell the function which port, which pin. And then, like before, we're going to put an input. And then there's no uh, there's no real default state to an input. Um, so we can just throw a zero in there. There are some special uh, GPIO modes where that where it could be an input, but that last digit does mean something. I'm not going to get into that. I just want to make you aware that it's not always zero depending on what kind of input you're going to use. Okay, And so that's, that's pretty basic here. Um, so that sets up our pin. Now the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to we're gonna want to do we want to set it up such that the GPO pin can do an interrupt. Okay, so we just kind of want to add it as an interrupt. And so very similar thing as what we did before. Okay, so we tell it the port, the pin. Uh, this one, if we dig into here again, they call it the uh, interrupt number, where is it? Interrupt number to trigger, it ends up being the pin number, okay? Um, and then, if I go back into here, the next one is rising edge, falling edge. Um, we'll, we'll do an interrupt on both the rising and falling edge. Uh, often you'll just do an interrupt on the rising edge, but for us, because when we press the button, this button, button one, we want it to light up the red LED and we let go, it turns it off. So we, we kind of want both. We want to know when the rising edge happens and when the falling edge happens. So true, true, true. 
And then the last one is whether or not we want to enable this interrupt, which we do. Okay. So the another thing we we're gonna want to register callback for this push button, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have the the callback register the same register. Okay. Sorry. I want the callback function to be the same for push button zero as it is for push button one. Okay. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to scroll down to where we had made the button callback before. Though this time I'm going to add to this if statement where I'm going to go else if pin double equals ah, of course not pin double equals and we're going to say button one. Okay. And then, like before, I want to know if this button's been pressed or not, or released. So I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to change the zeros to ones. Do. Um, so we're going to have to change what this. Um, so we're going to we're going to basically we're going to register quote unquote this event in the Bluetooth uh, stack. I think it's called the stack, I'm not sure. And then we also want to say, OK, we have this external interrupt, and it relates to this button. So what I think I want to do is I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to put a 0 here, because I want, I'm going to make the first bit, the 0th bit, related to the button 0 being pressed. The first bit to be button zero released. And then the second bit for button one pressed, and the second bit, the third bit, sorry, for button one released. So I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna just change, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change how this works. I'm gonna add button zero, button zero, one, one. So I'm gonna shift this for button one press, I'm gonna shift this over two times. And for release, I'm going to shift it over three times. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to here. So remember, when at main is run, we're going to be more or less stuck in this while loop, and we're going to be waiting for events to happen. And so when an external event happens, we're going to jump down to the system external. Okay, where we have some if statements. So the first one, remember, was if push button pressed. So in this case, if push button zero is pressed, then do this. Now on this one, if push button zero is released, then do this. So I'm going to more or less copy this, paste it, because I'm going to add a couple more. I'm going to push button zero, push button zero, one, one. And all I need to do is I need to change this LED to zero. Zero. Let's push button one. Uh, yeah, and then push button one. Zero. And the reason why it's LED zero is because instead of being the green, we want the red. Okay. And I'm going to build this. Okay. And then we're going to debug. And if everything works out, and I didn't forget anything. This should work. So once again, when this the program starts, we're going to start an int and eight, and we're just going to we're just going to resume it. So we'll, we'll have the program run, and just for a test, I'm going to press button zero to make sure nothing changed. So when I press it, the LED goes on and off, and then when I press the button one, we should see the red LED turn on and off, and then. If I press both of them at the same time, they should both turn on. It's a little hard to see, but you can see there's both the red and the green. 